Algebra 2, how are you doing? Hopefully well. We are going to look at, uh, we're going to look at solving logarithm equations. Last week we finished up talking about how to solve exponential equations. And to solve exponential equations, we use the logarithm form. Now we are going to look at solving logarithm equations using our exponential form. So we're just going to be kind of bouncing back and forth between these two. I'm just going to go over a whole bunch of examples. They're going to be relatively similar. I don't want to overload you all by yourself at home. Uh, so let's just kind of jump into this thing real quick. This property of equality for logarithm equations, it's pretty simple. Basically, if you've got two logarithm equations that are set equal to each other, this is like a very simple example. If the bases are the same and they're set equal to each other, see how this entire thing is set equal to this entire thing? If your bases are the same, then basically what it means is that the inside, this x and this inside of like y, they have to be the same as well. So if you have the same bases, everything's equal to each other, if you have the same bases on each side, then that means that this number x and this number y have to be equal to each other. So let's take a look at what that's going to mean for us solving just very simple ones. So I have this first example. I've got log base six of three x plus seven equals log base six of five x minus one. And as you see, I just said base six twice, right? On both sides of the equation, I have a logarithm and they are both in base six. That means, just like what I said up here, if I have the same bases, that means that the insides have to also be the same as well. I mean, the right hand and the left hand side of the equation, they have to be the same. We've got base 6. So what I'm going to write now is just that 3x plus 7 has to be equal to 5x minus 1. And then I can solve for x here, right? Because that's just a simple equation. I'm going to minus 3x from both sides. And that's going to be leaving me with 7 equals 2x minus 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 8 equals 2x. Divide by 2. And you got that x equals 4. All right? So that was a quick one. Again, I noticed that I had same bases on both sides. I can set the inside equal to each other. Let's look at a quick one. Very similar again. Here I have log of x plus 3 equals log of 4. Notice how... I don't have any bases here, right? And if you remember, if you have a logarithm that doesn't have a base, if the base is left out, we can always assume that it's going to be a common log. So it's going to have a base of 10, right? These common logs with base of 10, they work really well with a calculator. We usually just kind of leave them out, right? So if there's no base written, that means that these here are common logs. So I'm just going to rewrite this just so I can see log base 10 of x plus 3 equals log base 10 of 4. Again, we see that our bases are equal here. That means that the inside has to be equal. So I'm going to set the insides equal to each other and say, well, x plus 3 has to be equal to 4. I'm going to solve for x real quick. I'm going to get that x equals 1. So those were just two very basic examples where we were able to set like the inside of our logarithm equal to each other. Let's look at a couple harder examples. And for these, I actually have some steps. So step one, again, are the bases equal like what we talked about at the top? Are they equal so that you can just set the insides equal to each other and just solve? If so, do that. If not, step two, Make sure you can use the properties of logarithms to simplify uh, to just a very simple logarithm equation, okay? And this first one right here, this is what I'm kind of calling a very simple logarithm equation because I, uh, I just have a log base 8 of x equals my answer here, right? Equals 4 thirds. There's, there's no number on the outside that I'm multiplying by. I'm not adding 2 to the other end. It's just a very simple logarithm expression set equal to an answer. All right. Um, so once you've simplified as much as you can with your logarithm properties, then you're going to write in exponential form and continue solving for x. So let's take a look at this first equation. Again, if I'm going too fast, which I'm going to be going fast, just hit pause, rewatch something, all right? Take it at your own pace if you need to. So here, 
my, I don't have bases, I don't have logarithm expressions on both sides of the equations, so I'm just gonna move on to like step two and say, can I use any properties of logarithms to simplify? No, it's pretty much already a very simple logarithm equation. Uh, step three, can I write this in exponential form? Yeah, I can, because it's, uh, let me get my colors out here. I've got a log, I have a base of eight, Okay, and again, logarithm equations, we can write in exponential form the way I like to think of it is, I have a base of eight, has to be raised to this power of four thirds, and that should be equal to x, right? What power do I have to raise eight to in order to get x? So I'm gonna have a base of eight raised to the power of four thirds equals x. So that just took my logarithm and wrote it in exponential form. So now, this is just x equals something, right? Can you evaluate this? Yes, you can. All right, so now let me get orange again. So I'm gonna write this as, because I see in my exponent, I have like a rational exponent, I have this fraction exponent. The denominator tells me what kind of root I am taking, right? So I really, this is kind of throwing it back to chapter six, I could really just take the third root of eight and then raise it to the fourth power. We were able to write it like this, kind of breaking these up. So this power of four thirds really says I'm taking the third root and then I'm raising it to the fourth power. The third root of eight, if you remember, that is gonna give you two, but it's still being raised to this fourth power. So two raised to the fourth power is gonna give you 16. So now I can say that X equals 16. All right, let's move on. So, here I'm going to, well, I see this five is being multiplied to the rest of this log here, and I have equal to 0 0.75. It's not as simple as I can, or excuse me, it's not as simplified as I can go, or I can go a little bit more to simplify this. If I get rid of this five, then that would be like getting it into a very basic logarithm equation, right? So I'm gonna try and get rid of this five. I know the five is being multiplied to this log of x divided by 10. So instead of multiplying the 5, I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides to get rid of that 5. So divide by 5 on both sides, and I have 0.75 divided by 5. That gives you, you can type it into your calculator if you want, it's 0 0.15 equals, and then those cancel each other out, just equals log of x over 10. Now I have a very simple logarithm. I can start writing this in exponential form. Again, I'm gonna point out to you, hey, this logarithm doesn't have a base. So if it doesn't have a base, I'm going to assume that this thing is a common log and it should have a base of 10. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as 0 0.15 equals log base 10 of x over 10. Um, and then I can write this as an exponential equation, right? This is a very like simple, basic logarithm. My next step is to write it in exponential form. So writing this in exponential form, I have a base of 10. And I know that 10 raised to the power of 0 0.15. So 10 raised to the power of 0 0.15 has to be equal to x over 10. Okay, hang on, I'm going to... Give me just a second. Okay. So 10 raised to the power of 0 0.15 has to be equal to x over 10. So if I keep solving this, well, I'm just going to figure out what 10 raised to that power is. And if I type that into my calculator, uh, you will get 1.41253, and it just kind of keeps going. So about 1.41 1, 1 equals x over 10. Now to solve for x, I need to get rid of that 10 there. It's being divided, so the opposite of division is just to multiply. I'm gonna multiply by 10 on both sides. Okay, and that's gonna cancel out on the right-hand side of the equation. And then you're just going to be left with uh, x equals, and then these multiplied together gives you 14.12537. Uh, it just kinda keeps going. All right, so then there's my answer x equals 14.1253. Let's move on to another one. Oh, and goody, it made everything orange. That's great, okay. So solve log of x plus log of 10x equals three. 
I'm kind of getting little warning bells here. Again, I see that I don't have any bases, so I'm just going to rewrite all of these and say uh, that it's going to be... Why is it... Come on. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I'm just going to rewrite all of these and say that they have a base of 10. So I'm going to say log base 10 of x equals log base 10 of 10x. Again, I'm just working with common logs. They have a base of 10, so I'm just adding those in there so I can see them for later. If you remember back in the steps, I'm going to scroll back up real briefly. Number two says use the properties of logarithms. So we may have to use some properties of logarithms to simplify this down into an easy equation. I will post the properties of logarithms on the Google Classroom or at the end of this video so that you can see. But if you remember, sorry, this should be a plus. If you remember, when we are adding logarithms with the same base, if you're adding logarithms with the same base, you're really multiplying these insides, okay? So if I'm gonna kind of combine this down to just one simple logarithm expression, I'm gonna keep that same base of 10, but I'm gonna multiply the insides, all right? These were our simple logarithm operations. So I'm gonna have log base 10 of, on the inside I have x times 10x equals three. And then x times 10x, well that's just gonna be, so log base 10 of, that's gonna give you 10x squared because I'm multiplying my x twice. So I have log base 10 of 10x squared equals three. Again, this is a pretty simple logarithm equation. So now I can write this in exponential form. I'm gonna scoot this off to the side. I'm gonna write this in exponential form and say, I have a base of 10. I have to raise that 10 to an exponent of three. So 10 to the third power should be equal to 10 times x squared, 10 times x squared. I'm gonna keep simplifying this down. So this 10 to the third power, that should give you 1,000. It's 10 times 10 times 10 equals 10 x squared. I'm just gonna keep solving for x. So I'm gonna divide by 10 on both sides. Okay, that's gonna cancel out one of my zeros. So I'm just left with 100. 100 equals x squared. And then I'm gonna square root both sides to get rid of that square. Again, when we square root both sides, you need to make sure that you are uh, doing plus and minus, right? So square root of 100 I know is 10. It's a plus or minus 10 equals x, all right? So real quick, I'm just gonna summarize what we just did. We used our logarithm properties to simplify this down. I know if I'm adding logarithms with the same base, I'm really multiplying my insides. So I was able to simplify that down to just this here, then we can rewrite that as an exponential equation and then just keep solving for x. Okay, I have two more and I'm kind of running out of room. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna fix this real quick. All right, we're gonna look at base e. So I'm gonna zoom in on this first one real quick because this is a simple one. If we are solving a logarithm, but it's a natural log, now we're gonna do something kind of different and we're going to involve the number e. I know that e and natural log kind of cancel each other out, so that's going to um, play in here in just a second. First, just the first step, just simplify everything down, right? Get rid of anything that's unnecessary until we can get just a nice, simple logarithm equation. Here, that plus two on the outside, let's just kind of get rid of that. So I'm gonna take care of him and I'm going to minus two, Again, it's just like we're solving an equation. So I'm gonna minus two from both sides. I'll be left with the natural log of x equals 30. Uh, and then to finish this off here, I could say, well, if I raise, if I raise the left-hand side to a power of e, then that's going to cancel out my natural log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides uh, as a power of e. So I'm gonna write this as e to the power of natural log of x. So e to the power of natural log of x equals e to the power of 30. All right, and since I have e and natural log, they cancel each other out. I'm just left with this exponent of x. So x is equal to 
e to the power of 30. And then on your calculator, you could plug that in. You're going to get that x equals, it's a really huge number. Um, it's 1.068647 times. It put it into scientific notation. Probably not the best problem to choose, but that's all right. We figured it out. So when you're solving natural logs, you're going to have to use e. Let's look at the last one. Hang in there. You guys are doing great. So solving natural logs. Again, I've got this equation here. I'm going to say, I'm going to raise, there's, there's like nothing else that I have to do. I don't have to like divide by anything or minus or add something because there's nothing on the outside of these logarithms, right? So I'm just going to raise both sides to, uh, raise both sides as a power b. So I'm going to say e raised to the power of natural log of 4x plus 1. So e raised to the power of natural log of 4x plus 1 has to be equal to e raised to the power of 9. e raised to the power of 9. And now I can see, all right, well, e and natural log cancel each other out. I'm just left with this exponent of 4x plus 1. So 4x plus 1 has to be equal to e to the ninth power. And e to the ninth power, type that in your calculator. That is 8,103.083928, whatever. And now we can just finish solving for x. So off on my left-hand side of the equation, I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. Uh, so I'm left with 4x equals... Minusing 1, that's going to give you 8,102.0839. And then divide by 4 to get rid of that 4. And then I'm going to have x equals, so 8102.0839 divided by 4 is about uh, 2,025.77, I'll call it. All right, and there we go. So you have some questions here you got all right you got some examples hopefully that was helpful don't forget if you've got natural log you're gonna have to involve e raising both sides to like or excuse me raising e to the power of like both sides if you need to simplify your logarithms by using some logarithm operations you may need to do that um, otherwise just writing them in exponential form and make sure you can solve them that way or again, if you have logarithms on both sides where their bases are equal, then you just have to set these insides equal to each other as well. Then you can solve for x. I am going to choose a couple problems from the book. Um, I may also include my own problems that aren't in the book. These will all be typed up and attached to the assignment as a Google Doc. If you want to print it out and work on it uh, with a scratch piece of paper, that's fine. If you want to type it up, Type up your work as well if you can. Show that as much as you will, as much as you can. Um, other than that, have a great day. Adios. And I'll see you later. Bye. The assignment for 2.1 is going to be on page 315. Uh, I'm only doing four problems, so do number three, number six, number seven, and number eight. I have also typed them up if you would prefer to do this electronically instead of your own sheet of paper. Uh, I've typed all of the problems up in this Google Docs. So... This number three, I just want to talk through this real quick. All of them you're going to be solving algebraically. Number three, you're given log base eight of seven x minus five equals log base eight of four x plus nine. I said base eight twice. They have the same base on each side. Think about what you might have to do to solve four x here. Number six, I want to point out that it's 10 times log of 5x plus 9 equals 15. So how would you simplify this down just to be a regular, very basic logarithm equation? How would you get rid of that 10 there? It's being multiplied. Think about that. Down here again, how would you possibly get rid of that 3? That 3 is being multiplied to this entire thing. Then you'd be able to write it in exponential form. And then down here again, you see 12 times natural log of 8x plus 3 equals 30 natural log think about including some where's my cursor think about including e how would you include e in order to solve this one all right four problems do it on your own sheet of paper and take a picture of the work email it to me upload it uh type everything out on a google docs if you prefer however you like